First of all, uh, thank you for the edi uh, educational videos with Dr. Ryan. I'm 34 years old. I'm 5'9 uh, and 63 kilos, uh, so obviously he's in Europe, with 12 to 13% <laughs> body fat. Uh, last year, I tried uh, GHRP6 for the first time, which was the, uh, the peptide we talked about in the previous show, and with good results. Uh, I was 56 kilo and capable of, so he gained basically 7 kilos, and capable of gaining weight no matter how hard I tried. The only downside I could notice um, comparing the blood test before and after was that uh, a significant increase of fasting glucose. Before using uh, GHRP6, my fasting blood glucose was around 80 and even below, afterwards 103, uh, according to the chart, 70 to 100 would be normal, and 101 to 125 is considered to be impaired fasting glucose. Now, after a year, I was thinking about trying GHRP6 one more time and, and hopefully reach a healthy 70 kilo, uh, but since my effort uh, to put on weight has been fruitless. Do you have any suggestion? Is it going to be dangerous? Am I risking getting diabetes? <clears throat> Uh, could increase cardio control the side effects. Can I stack uh, a one-time one only steroid cycle for better results? Forgive me for the prolonged question, just trying to provide enough information for the doctor. Which makes it easier for me to answer the question. Thank okay. you. Uh, as far as danger goes, I don't know that there's any danger to these peptides. As you know, in this country, as of yet, it's not FDA approved. You mentioned Europe, could be South America. You know, a lot of countries use kilos instead of oh. pounds. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, if it's legal there, then uh, all the better for him. As far as the blood sugar goes, um, that one's an easy one. I mean, the, in this country, 100 to 126 is considered that uh, no man's land where we consider, hey, are you diabetic or not? But that's just a quote-unquote fasting glucose. And what I find with a lot of athletes, particularly well-muscled athletes, is... Um, and I know it sounds uh, maybe intuitively backwards because you say, well, the guy has a lot of muscle. He's going to be soaking up all that blood sugar. So he's going to have lower than usual blood sugar, perhaps. But what I find is that the blood sugar can be high uh, for a fasting blood uh, sugar test in the morning because whether it's subconscious or not, if you know that you're not going to be able to eat your normal, you know, six egg whites, et cetera, in the morning, you know, you'll hound a little bit more at dinner time. And I see it all the time. Guys come in and all of a sudden their, their blood glucose uh, fasting, you know, has gone up. And, you know, maybe they just had a, a bigger meal, again, consciously or subconsciously. Because they know they can't eat. Yeah. The and, and because, we, you know, <laughs> as an athlete, you know, particularly a well-muscled athlete, you're going to eat more with each meal. And that being your last meal of the day, the night before, et cetera, it could be higher. Bottom line for this gentleman or anyone is if you suspect diabetes, then... You know, the, the fasting blood glucose is just a, a, a starter, if you will. You go, hmm, if it were 135, let's say, that's kind of a no-brainer. To Well, first you say, are you, were you sure you were fasting? And they go, well, yeah, but coffee doesn't count, right? You know, no, it does count. <laughs> uh, but if you're sure that that's a fasting number, then you can do something called uh, a hemoglobin A1C. I say you do, you can take an, a, a blood test, and there's a specific assay where... The hemoglobin A1C gives you a, a, an average number of, of sugar, if you will, and that's in layman's terms, mm -hmm. over a three to four month period. So you know, okay, my sugars have been elevated consistently rather than in this one snapshot. And here we go back to the previous question of, you know, the, the problem with labs is they're just one snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, further, we know that the GHRP6 through a different mechanism of action is going to raise growth hormone levels, mm -hmm. which we find tends to raise blood sugar uh, oftentimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so my curbside service answer, which all this is, is, you know, because I, I don't have a complete history here, would be not to worry about it, uh, certainly to investigate by getting a hemoglobin A1C next lab. But um, it, sounds with, it sounds fairly normal just with what he's saying. Because one of the things that GHRP6 does, aside from uh, raising growth hormone levels, is it increases your appetite. You told me that. <laughs> uh, a lot of guys I know that are bodybuilders don't use it for the growth hormone uh, benefit. They use it to stimulate appetite. Someone who's naturally thin will take GHRP6, 100 mics, for example, before 
30 minutes before a meal so that their appetite is improved. Mm -hmm. So that might be part of the reason why his blood sugar went up is just because he's eating more. Right. And it sounds like he was, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to put on the weight. Right. Period. I mean, that's right. anabolics 101, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what was the other part of the question? Help me out. I don't, uh, um... Can he stack? Uh, can he stack at a one-time only uh, steroid cycle for better results? Would you? Well, we know, know that um, anabolics that? work better with, or I should say, uh, growth hormone works better with anabolics. Mm -hmm. um, that's for sure. So, if if the point of his using GHRP six is to elevate his growth hormone then certainly uh, you know, uh, a healthy testosterone level would only be beneficial. And that kind of, yeah. you know, that's a no-brainer too. As far as steroids go, um, you know, that's, that's all up to him. Yeah. What, what he's using as his, you know, quote, unquote, well, testosterone yeah. base, yeah, yeah. Know, which is, we've talked about steroids before. He's, I'm sure he's referring to anabolic steroids, yeah. a testosterone oh, yeah. molecule that's been of course. Uh, so that's a good question. changed to affect the DNA anabolically. All right, thank you, Doc. Okay. HRP6, let me see. That was the one question. Oh, by the way, he said, uh, P.S., I am too uh, libertarian and proud to have a good doctor among us. <laughs> 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 Had to throw that in there. <laughs> well, yeah, I should probably make that clear. You know, I am a registered libertarian for sure, but uh, that doesn't mean I break the law. I mean, I mean, I, I'm all for changing the laws so that we can make them, you know, fair so that uh, as long as we're not hurting anybody else, uh, you know, uh, yeah, but I, I'm... Uh, Proud to be a libertarian. Glad there's another one <laughs> of what uh, he's in a different country, but uh, it sounded like right. It sounded like it, yeah. Uh, there's only two percent of us here in this country, right? <laughs> okay. The next question, uh, Dave. Question relating to the GH peptide, uh, epimorlin and uh, MODG uh, GRF one dash twenty nine for the doc. Um, in your opinion, do you think not me, of course, the doc. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think peptide users should be cautious about having high blood uh, high blood sugar level while having very high serum GH level uh, using peptide without uh, exogenous insulin? Um, for example, I inject uh, 100 microgram of epimoralin and 100 microgram of uh, MODG uh, GRF. Um, 10 to 15 minutes post workout. I am waiting 10 to 15 minutes uh, to allow MGF enough time to do uh, its thing. Would it be best to hold off on the carbohydrates for an hour or so after the peptide injection, or would it be fine to eat the carbs soon after the injection? I am asking for an opinion on optimizing the healthiness of the post-workout GH peptide. Keep the informa uh, informative work. Much appreciated. That's a good one. Um, first of all, epimoralin and you know the, the 1 through 29 uh, peptides, um, I think you're doubling up on, on the action there, but that's fine. Um, the idea is that you're stimulating your own endogenous production of growth hormone when you use those peptides, right? Um, so you're only going to defeat the purpose by adding carbs, as he put it, to your diet within about a 30-minute window of that attempt to raise your own GH because we know that, well, when we have carbs, we're going to have an insulin reaction to them and insulin competes with our endogenous production of GH. So not a good idea to take your, I mean, not a good idea with the purpose being mm -hmm. assuming to get your GH levels high, it wouldn't be a good idea to have carbohydrates for at least a half an hour. Okay. Now, maybe he has another purpose in mind, but it sounds like, you know, if he's using something which is a GH releaser, that that's his purpose, but I don't right. want to necessarily assume. Um, so, yeah, st stay away from the carbs for at least a half an hour. Um, you might want to consider doing your GH releasers, um, and Samorlin is one that is legal here in the United States, which mm -hmm. is that 1 through 29 uh, peptides, um, at night. Right. Uh, right before you go to bed, again, preferably on an empty stomach, so that when you fall asleep no about an yeah. hour after you go to sleep, you're you're gonna you're gonna push your own natural production, which occurs about an hour after you go to sleep, mm. also. Um, and again, if you've taken in some insulin, 
excuse me, taking in some carbohydrate and your insulin is going to spike. Now, a lot of bodybuilders don't pay attention to that. Why? Because, and I don't mean to pick on bodybuilders, a lot of people who use exogenous uh, uh, growth hormone don't concern themselves with that because they're not worried about their exogenous, excuse me, endogenous production. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of us that are trying to use, um, you know, science to uh, improve your own endogenous production, then yeah, it limiting matters. the carbs is important. Yeah. Now you made a reference to, oh, uh, so in addition to that, that would preclude the use of insulin, which is what he referred to, right? Right. Yeah, you don't want to use insulin. It would be counterproductive. Counterproductive, yeah. Now, you know, counterproductive during the window he talks about. Right. Um, I'm not a proponent of using insulin unless you have diabetes. Yeah. But I understand the purpose for using insulin uh, uh, for some guys, although I would argue at least what I learned in medical school is, you know, insulin's gonna push energy about 75, 25 into fat and muscle versus GH, which is the opposite, about 75 muscle, 25 wow. fat. So, I, I, you know, I, I haven't followed the idea behind using insulin for bodybuilders and athletes in general. Although, you know, I see the results and I see some bad results too. I think a lot of the, and again, I'm. I'm rambling again today, but uh, a lot of the so-called GH belly is due to, you know, our newfound use of insulin mm -hmm. uh, in those cases. But in, in this gentleman's question, yeah, I don't think uh, that that would solve the problem. And uh, if his uh, blood sugars are elevated, um, that's quite natural. And that's based upon the prior question, you know, you know, with GH, uh, we find that uh, oftentimes the, the, the blood sugar, the basal levels are a little bit higher than would be normal. Do you think instead of taking it, you know, when he does now, it would be better for him to just use it at night before he goes to bed? Well, again, if the, if the idea is to promote growth hormone release, yes. Now, he may say, well, I'm going to rely on my own natural production at night, but I want more during the day, so I'll right. do it. Uh, well, one great time to use it is just like what he suggests, which is after workout. Yeah. When your uh, sugars are depleted, right? But he Makes just has sense. to wait before he eats again, that's all. Yeah. And, gotcha. and I say sugars are depleted. That's assuming that he's not using a workout drink, you know, or right. go whatever while he's working out. Right. That's okay. training empty. That's a, that's a good that's a good answer. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Hi. Uh, I would like to know if it's safe to do steroids if you have Gilbert's syndrome, um, a benign condition in which uh, bilirubin levels are slightly elevated. By the way, uh, syndrome or no syndrome, I'm only planning to do injectable because I want to preserve my liver as much as I can. My first cycle, um, age 33, and looking forward to do sustenance, winstrol, and the proper PCT plus HCG. Thanks in advance. I can think of no reason why TRT would be contraindicated with Gilbert's. It's an, uh, an what is problem that? with um, you make too much unconjugated bilirubin. And actually, there's a lot of health benefits to come with it, they find. Uh, in studies, um, fewer incidents of uh, coronary artery disease being one. So I don't see a problem with, uh, well, he's, he doesn't say whether it's for replacement therapy or not. No. But um, there, there, again, should be no contraindication. Uh, you're not, your, your liver is not... Um, Let's see. Uh, it's not defective. It's just not working like a normal liver. But his his liver is not at risk. Mm -hmm. His liver is not going to fail to function. Okay. Uh, simply because he's got Gilbert syndrome. Um, again, we find that there are some benefits uh, to having Gilbert syndrome. So nothing, nothing to worry about using that. I had a, I had somebody recently write me about that. Um, I believe. Uh, uh, from Spain and um, uh, well, it's beside the point. But uh, and there are more people than I thought have Gilbert syndrome right. who are, are concerned about it. I don't know why. Well, what what would be the concern? Misconception? Maybe did you think that you know? Well, I, you know, I, loaded question. I think a lot of people remember the days when uh, methyl test was the primary source of testosterone yeah. replacement therapy or any sort of exogenous testosterone. And we still have on the labels yeah. 
of uh, you know warnings testosterone cypionate and warning about liver cancer that's why. which makes no sense yeah. <laughs> uh, methylated <laughs> testosterone was great we thought because the methylization made it harder for the the liver to break it down so we thought oh great well need less and it you know stays in the system longer we found out it works the liver too hard and the link with liver cancer back then was tenuous at best I mean have guys that were using methyl tests for 15 years and then maybe that's a source of the liver cancer but um, anyway again yeah. the loaded question being that maybe because uh, Gilbert's affects the liver that that's the concern yeah and this is why we do your show <laughs>